Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are going to be taking a look at a new Microtech switch as well as a fiber cable that I ordered. Now, this is not going to be an in-depth review of either of the two products here. I just wanted to show you kind of an update on what I'm doing these days, um, as well as taking a look at the project I'm working on, which I have recorded other videos of. Um, I'm not sure when those are gonna release yet, but I just wanted to show you kind of an update here um, that kind of will lead into the next video that I will make um, in this series, which will be actually showing you the whole project I'm working on. So the thing that I'm working on, actually, this is my office right here. The thing that I'm working on is I have fiber optic cables that go from here. I have it go to my MDF. And I also have a separate building, um, obviously, yeah, separate building that will also have a 10 gigabit fiber connection to my MDF. So this connection here will go to a switch that will be racked here. An update on that is later. Um, but basically I'm running fiber all through my office and MDF and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what's happening. I'm gonna open up these two items and that will hopefully make a little more sense on what's going on, uh, especially why I have some products here from FS, which is the fiber store. So let's take a look at those things, but let me open up these boxes first. So the first order of business today is this fiber patch cord that is, as you can see, is 20 meters. Um, and actually I need to return this because I don't need it anymore. Uh, let me show you what happened. This is the one that I previously purchased, and I didn't even notice it, but when I got it, it was kind of already split up, which is kind of great. So I ordered another one in a replacement, but I ended up ordering a different size cable, different length. Like I said, this will all be in a different video, so if you want to see more about this fiber project and why I'm running uh, single-mode fiber to certain destinations in my, in my building, um, watch that video. But now let's take a look at this Microtik switch. So this is the Cloud Switch series. I don't know the model number, to be honest. Uh, I just ordered it. It's something, something IN, and it is a rack mount. No, it has rack mount ears. Not sure the exact model, and I'm not going to read this quick start guide either. So we're gonna find out the model later on in this video. Um, but let's look at the power supply first. So the thing I don't like about this switch is that it does not have a standard like power supply input. It actually has um, a like external power supply which is fine because it doesn't take much power, but I would much prefer an item like this to have its own dedicated internal power supply. Um, but obviously they did that to save cost, as you'll see a little bit later. So yeah, this is the Cloud Router switch. This is a CRS3091GAS plus IN, which I believe means one gigabit ethernet port, has eight SFPs, and it is the something, I don't know what IN means, but I wanna say indoor, I do not know. Um, but let's take a look at the back here. So we've got the 12 to 57 volt uh, power connection input. We have a grounding plug here. And that is about it. We have the eight 10 gigabit per second SFPs, as well as this ethernet port that doubles as a boot or a PoE input. So we can actually power this over PoE as well and have redundant power supplies, which I do like about this unit. But I still wish that there was an integrated power supply for the primary power supply. So. That is that. I'm going to, this is my switch that will be an MDF. Actually, this will not be going in my office. So uh, I think what I want to do first is power this thing up and just plug my laptop in and see what happens. Okay, so I have the switch booted up here. Uh, as you can see, I have a self-assigned IP address though, which means this thing is not putting out DHCP. Um, I will say, I was gonna make a comment about how quiet it is, but it's like beeping, which is kind of odd. I've never seen like a rack mounted product like this beep. So, at this point, I'm still waiting to see if it gives me an IP address. I'm not sure how that works in the Microtik land. Um, like I know a Ubiquiti router will give you an IP, but this also isn't technically a router, so I'm not sure exactly what to think about this so far. So if this doesn't give me an IP, I'm just gonna look it up. We're gonna see um, how to set this thing up, but um, yeah, I'm still getting a self-assigned, which is odd. So. We'll see what happens. I'll give you an update. I'm not sure how much I'm going to go through the setup of this just because I have never used a Microtik switch before. I don't want to give you any like instructions or anything and it like not work for you when you try it. Okay, so I just wanted to show an update here. Uh, I went to this IP address in my browser. Uh, I gave my Mac a static IP on 192.168.88.5 and 88.1 is this router from what it seems like. So uh, it's not loading. Oh, there we go. So your password is expired. So I don't know what the password is. So we're going to have to go find this out. Okay. So it looks like we have a setup configuration here, um, where you can configure internet settings, uh, address acquisition, address source, etc. 
So I'm going to actually see real quick router mode. It does look like you can configure all kinds of settings, which is really cool. So I'm not going to be using this in router mode due to the fact that I have my own Ubiquiti routers and that kind of stuff around here. So basically I'm using this only as a switch, but I do not want to run it in switch OS mode because from what I've read online, if you are in switch OS mode, you don't get as many features. So uh, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to apply configuration here at the bottom and just wait and see basically what happens. Okay, so it looks like I did switch that to DHCP mode, so it's not gonna do anything now. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up a fiber cable to it, connect this down to my MDF over 10 gig. We're gonna go from there. All right, guys, so I have the MicroTik switch set up right here uh, on my rack at my desk. Um, obviously, this is not the final resting point of it because I don't have anything else that will connect over that 10 gigabit per second link. Uh, the final point this will be is this will be my new MDF switch, and this switch will be fed from my core router, and it will feed most likely my servers, my other um, MicroTik switches, and maybe even my Ubiquiti switches as well. So this thing, like I said, will just be the central hub of everything in my network. So that will be that. All right, so I apologize for the noise, but as you can see here, I have the switch racked in my MDF. And I have all of my connections all set up here. These mostly go to switches in some of my servers and these go um, to farther away destinations. So this one is my office, and this is another building, which you guys will see in a different video coming up. As you can see, I have 10 gigabit per second connection here. Um, this feeds up, and this goes to my UDM Pro. These two one gig connections go to my 24 port switches. I have one 10 gig that goes to one of my servers, one 10 gig that goes to the other. As you can see, I have the two servers here. Eventually, I will get another 10 gig for one of those. That'll probably go there. Um, but yeah, this switch has been running for a couple weeks now. It's been pretty solid. Had no issues whatsoever. Updating it, like in terms of firmware updates, has been fantastic. It, it takes just about two to three minutes to update it, so not bad at all. I'm really impressed with this switch. It takes basically no power. Um, it's not even being powered over this PoE right now. It looks like it's prioritizing the power supply on the back. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, so that is basically all I have for this video. Uh, the next video in this series, I'm going to walk you through this fiber project. This was quite, uh, quite the task, uh, as you will find out. And to wrap this video up, I wanted to show you an update on my office rack. As you can see, I have this fiber cable tucked away in here. It was kind of long. Um, but I also replaced all my patch cables with these Monoprice Slim Run cables. I think they look really nice. I have two different lengths. I have the like six inch cables and I have the one foot cables. I also have some, I also have some seven foot cables that are back there that feed things like this access point. So, yep, these cables are super nice. Uh, this fiber goes down to the switch, the main switch we just uh, set up earlier in this video. So that has been fantastic to have. As you can see, I have a 2.5 gig connection. This goes to my Mac mini and that has been great. I have this temporary connection here that goes to this adapter, this USB-C adapter. Uh, another 2.5 gig. It's been really nice not fully saturating this 10 gig link because that means I have a lot of bandwidth available to all of the things connected to the switch as well as the things connected down to this switch that I have aggregated over this 2 gig connection. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.